Hey there, I'm Angelo Montilla, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create realistic print design mockups using Adobe Photoshop. Follow along in this lesson and learn how to work with smart object layers to place artwork in a mockup, as well as use a clipping mask to create a reflection effect on this bus sign billboard. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. The first step is exporting the artwork that you want to bring over to Photoshop. As you can see on my screen here, I have two posters for this fictional indie film fest. So let's export these as JPEGs and we'll need them later on when we add our artwork in Photoshop. So let's go up to File, Export, and then Export As. And just make sure in the Format drop down here, you choose JPEG. PNG would work as well. Click the Use Artboard selection here and we do want to export all of them and then name it what you want and just click export. In this selection here, the JPEG window, set the quality to larger file and the resolution to 300 and click OK. To download the image that I'm using in this tutorial, go to stock.adobe.com and click on the free collection and then just search billboard bus. This is the one that I'm using here, so go ahead and click that. And then you could just download it for free and we'll open it in Photoshop next. Okay, I've opened the image in Photoshop and the first thing I wanna do is add a shape with the same dimensions as the artwork from Illustrator. So I'm gonna click on the rectangle tool, click on the canvas, and let's make the width three, four, five, six pixels. And the height will be 4896 pixels. Now that equates to 48 inches by 68 inches, and that was the size of the artwork from the Illustrator file, those two posters. So once you've done that, go ahead and click OK, and you can see I have the shape on my page. I'm going to grab my Move tool and just move it upwards a bit, and you can see there is the shape. Now I gave it a vibrant fill color. I'm just going to turn the stroke off, so if you go to your Properties panel under the Appearance, Let's just make the stroke set to zero. I'm also gonna go to the layers panel and I'm gonna right click the rectangle and convert it to a smart object. And while I'm here, let's also rename this to just double click that and let's call this main artwork. Great, now while holding command and pressing T, that would be control T on Windows, go ahead and let's scale that down. It is in free transform mode now. You can also go up to edit free transform to do the same action, just the long form way, let's position this around the area of that sign. Doesn't have to be perfect to start because we're gonna distort this in just a second. So something like that is fine. Let's right click it again and let's choose distort. Now what I want you to do is grab each of the corner handles and position them in the corner of the sign. I'm gonna zoom in a bit here just to get a little better view. And it doesn't have to be perfect to start, just anywhere near there, because we're gonna use a layer mask to set this up in just a moment. So something like that is fine. I'm just gonna move my cursor up and zoom in there. That looks good. And let's position this last one here. That looks really good to me as is. So if I just hit return, you can see that we have our shape distorted and in the area that we want when we place our artwork. Let's turn off that main artwork layer just for a sec and let's click on the background layer. I'm gonna make my way over to the tools panel and choose the magic wand tool. Now keep in mind you can choose any of the selection tools that you want. For this I'm gonna use the magic wand tool because it's pretty simple and I can just click into this white area and you can see that the marching ants in my selection have been activated. Now I wanna refine this just a little bit more just to make sure that I'm picking up as much of the edge as possible. And to do that, just go up to Select, Modify, and Expand. I wanna expand by two pixels, so go ahead and click OK. And you can see that just expands the selection ever so slightly so it's right up against the black edge in the image. So I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna click on the main artwork layer and turn that back on. Make sure that you're on the main artwork layer when you do this, and let's choose Add Layer Mask. Go ahead and click that, and now we've added a layer mask 
that we can edit and add our content to. So those posters, the Film Fest posters, we'll add those to the Smart Layer object now. I'm gonna double click that, and you can see it's that magenta color fill that I've applied to the placeholder. Next, we'll just drag in the poster artwork. Remember the JPEGs that we exported from Illustrator? Let's drag those in next. So I'm just gonna drag those in. You could drag both of them in. And that fits nicely because we kept it to the same dimension. So I'm just gonna click the check mark there to accept that. And I'll click the check mark again to accept that poster. Now check this out. If I just save this PSB file with the first poster and go back to my main mockup here, you can see it applies to the sign. If I wanna switch, I'll just turn this layer off, resave the PSB, and go to my main artwork, and it's the second poster. So that's how you would toggle between poster one and poster two. So let's leave it on this second poster, and I'll show you now how to add a cool reflection just to make it a little bit more realistic. I've left a link in the description below of a secondary image that I wanna use for the reflection on this sign. I'm gonna drag it onto the canvas and just drop it in. So you can see it's another view of a street with pedestrians walking towards the sign. It's just gonna give the mock-up a more realistic feel. So I'm just going to increase the size of this for now and position it over here just to start. And I'm gonna hit return to accept that position. I'm gonna right click this and choose create clipping mask. Another way of doing that is just holding your option key on Mac. That would be Alt on Windows. Hover your mouse in between those layers and click to create that clipping mask. Now you can see that it's just replaced our sign altogether, but I'm gonna add a blend mode to this to give it that reflection feel. I'm gonna go up to normal and choose screen. You can see that still doesn't look good. And I'm just gonna scale down the opacity to about 20. Something like that already looks good because you could see there is a reflection coming off of the sign, almost like it's a glass or a plastic that you would normally see on a sign like this. So let's just set it to even 25 is good. And of course I can command T free transform and position this the way you want. Something like that is fine. Just so you could see the people walking up the street and towards the sign. I'm gonna hit return and that is how you add a cool reflection. Again, if I go back to my PSB file and turn on the second one, do command S to save, and then you can see that the reflection also applies to the second poster as well. Let's go back, turn off that first poster, command S, and there's that purple version of the poster. You can also add another adjustment layer to adjust the lighting, such as using levels. Again, use the clipping mask technique, so hold option and clip it to the next layer and then just darken it ever so slightly to not only darken the poster, but bring out the reflection just a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create realistic print design mockups using Adobe Photoshop. If you found it helpful, leave a like or comment below, click that subscribe button and notification icon to stay up to date with all my latest content. If you'd like to learn how to use the timeline panel to create animated social media posts in Adobe Photoshop, check out this video right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.